Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of CVTV Workshops. How is everybody doing? How are you doing, Dave? Yeah, doing good, man. Time for another show. I'm excited I'm, about this. I know, me too, me too. So anybody watching, we are direct watching directly from CVTV. And uh, we do these workshops every couple of weeks. We're streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube as well. And we do this every couple of weeks. We cover different topics. You know, we have an extent, we're, we're building our library of topics and workshops that we've done. And we not only cover about hydros, but we also cover, you know, what the what the equipment is for. And it's great for newbies. I think we, we, do, a, I, we do a fairly good job of, of covering, you know, beginner knowledge so you can you if you're a beginner stick around you're gonna you're gonna have a good time if you're an advanced user you might learn something you know you know yeah. or at least you know feel free to uh put comments in there and help out the newbies we always appreciate that yeah any questions anybody has feel free to fire them away and, you know we like to to try and showcase a piece of equipment yes uh, you know with these shows and then how it can evolve into automation through hydros with that product. And that's kind of, you know, what we're doing with these shows. Exactly. So before we get started with the show, I want to say hello to Reefing with O, Greg Carroll, David Paulson is here. Wow, David Paulson is here. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, everything Wendy's here. Cindy from uh, Cindy Goral Gal is right here. Port, Port Wolf, uh, New York Bumpkin Reefing. Matt Greer is here as well. So welcome. We see some new faces, which is actually kind of fun. Uh, we yeah. this is this is actually great. Thanks so. For Yes, yes, yes. So if you are new to the show, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, or hit that little uh, bell, and it'll tell you exactly when the show is going live. If you hit the subscribe button, you'll get an, a notification email prior, a few days prior, just to make your plans. Otherwise, we'll just get a little live, real-time notification that we are live. So we are live streaming again, uh, TV, TV, Facebook, and YouTube. So Dave, what's today's topic? What are, what are, what's so good today? You know, today we're talking about uh, RODIs, and and really, Carlos, you think about us as hobbyists. We we really only have one job in this, and it's water management. That's our whole focus as hobbyists, and and it, it, you got to start from zero with water quality, and yes, and that's what this this machine here does, and. And what we're doing today is showing you how hydros can take that to the next level in terms of automation with our yes. new, uh, hydros TDS uh, sensor. Now, Dave, uh, you know, uh, for for us, for us, for the for us of us, some of us that are newbies here, what is RODI? Why do I need RODI water? You know, it's like when I was doing fresh water, I never use RODI water. So, yeah. can I not use RODI water? Yeah, I, I say anybody that's that's in the aquarium industry or hobby, whatever you, you're getting started, you want to have one of these. Um, it's it's a vital piece of equipment. Um, you know, we live in this age where we don't know what our municipalities are putting in the water. We we really have to to be diligent and and taking the the water that we bring from our source and stripping it to zero or as close to zero as possible. Why do we have to strip it? What's the point of stripping the water? Well, look, because there's so many uh, total uh, TDSs, the dissolved organics, basically, that's in the water. Um, you know, you hear stories throughout the country. People range uh, from measuring their TDS from 80. I've, I've heard people measuring TDS of over 500 and some areas of the country. And that's a measurement of of what's in their incoming water to their home or business. That's what and how the does, municipality is providing. How does TDS affect the, the aquarium? I mean, what are what are the results of TDS? Yeah, Tell so me. I mean, for you're looking at the, the total uh, dissolved organics and, and phosphate levels, silicate, um, chloramines now is, is a huge uh, issue going on. And, just doing some research into what these municipalities are putting in the water. And the thing is, is you could test for it and it may not be there today, but tomorrow you could be reading something totally different. We just don't know what we're getting from our source water um, and, and throughout the country. It's an unfortunate situation, but uh, 
we really need to to know that what we're starting with for our aquariums is 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 zero and then from there we add our salt and our trace elements and so it's really critical that we have a a, a measurement and that, and that's what we we're trying to do with you know the different uh tds meters and and uh the the filters that we're putting into these rodi units okay so rodi for those newbies rodi stands for reverse osmosis and what it does is is literally it's a membrane that you push water through it and as the water passes through the membrane not around the membrane not you know it passes through the membrane it's pressurized pass through the membrane as it passes through the membrane the membrane catches all the particulates even the things that we don't we can't see and on the other end you get clean water that has nothing in it have you ever had a fish tank that you know all of a sudden it's like you have a salt water tank and you can't fight and, you, and you're always having algae problems you have hair algae and everything and then you measure your phosphates and you measure your silicates and uh or people tell you it's like you know what check your phosphates check your silicates you're gonna see you know you're gonna see an increase in them and then you can't figure it out it's like you, you're using clean water you know your city says that you know you have clean water so that's what rodi that's what the rodi filter does it cleans the water to the point that it strips everything out of the water so then you have a clear clean base and then from there you add on only what you need to in a controlled environment it's almost like a controlled environment you're adding trace elements you're adding um, um you know, uh, food and other things to it, but you're keeping away all the bad stuff like phosphates and silicates that could easily contribute to the growth of algae in your tank. You know, fresh water is not as is not as as um, demanding as salt water is. But if you have a salt water tank, if you're new to fit, to salt water tank, uh, ROI water. You know, if you cannot get an ROI water unit, you can get ROI water from your local fish store as well you know but at the end of the day after you know a few months of traveling and, and hauling water it just becomes easier to get yourself a unit so yeah. that's what and a that, reverse osmosis does yeah. and not just you know not to throw any stores or that's selling water under the bus but it's really nice to know when you are on top of it yourself and and re what the, the filters are that you're using um, with this ice cap unit here we're using uh, film tech RO membranes I really highly recommend these. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, made by DuPont. It's just uh, a, a really high quality uh, membrane. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna ask the, our producer, April. Um, um, okay, so, you know, everybody, we're talking about an ROI water here and it's, uh, it's literally, in, in, in a nutshell, it's a filter. But what does an ROI water filtration unit looks like? I know you have this uh, big unit in on the table, but that's like the Cadillac and we'll get to that one. But April, can you put picture number one? Let's just look at a basic ROI unit. So what do you have in an ROI unit is called different filters so as you can see if you zoom in a little bit which i don't think you can but i'm just going to say on the left bottom one sediment one and then you have carbon so the water goes through those two pre-filters we call them pre-filters to um, um to uh to kind of pre-filter the water before it hits the main filtering system and the reason why you're doing that is because um the less filtering the main membrane does, or the more you can help that membrane, the more it's gonna last, you know? And obviously the pre-filters are, are much cheaper than an actual membrane. So after the water makes it through the sediment and the carbon filter, it makes its way through to the RO membrane. And that's the main filter. That's the, that's the membrane. That's what does most of the filtration. And that's the one that Dave said it was a film tech, which is a well-known company in water filtration. You can find film tech on many hardware stores because this same filtration unit is almost what it's used for your water filtration drinking water. So the water makes it through the pre-filters and goes into the RO membrane. It gets, literally, it gets squeezed out into clean, it, it, the, the dirt gets squeezed out of it, and then it makes it to what we call the deionization filter. And that is, um, uh, it's a last 
resort, a last filter. So whatever particulates are small enough, like silicates, that make it through the membrane, then the deionization filter takes care of them. So if water makes it through that, and then the water after the deionization exits the filtration and goes into a reservoir, that's where, and that water is 100%, or I mean, it's almost 99% clean and sterile, and it's a great base to get started. Now that water, then you add your salt, then you add your trace elements, and then you do a water change. So yep. that's pretty much how, how a war, uh, an RODI unit works. I would you like know? to throw out one other filter that may be a replacement, and and this is a, a chloramine filter. This would go into set the uh, stage two and replace the carbon. But this is a big issue that's uh, happening now in, in, in water that's coming from municipalities is they're adding these chloramines to the water. And the yes. only way to test for it is you can use little strips and but the biggest problem is we don't know when it's being added. Uh, it could be seasonal. You can always call your uh, local municipality uh, water supplier and they're supposed to tell you what, what they're adding. Now, we just don't have control over what they're adding, when, or, you know, it's not something we want to make a call to before we do a, a turn on our RO unit. So really for the cost of these, I, can't preach uh, enough about having yes. this in your view. And the reason why is because chloramine is a is a substance, it's a chemical that, that a lot of city municipalities are adding to the water. It cleans, it kills germs, it and it does it in a way that is highly efficient and yep. very, very cheap. And you know how it is, you know, cities nowadays, they're, they have budget issues and they're trying to figure out ways to, you know, treat water with the demand of more people in cities, treat water in an economical way. So they're adding this chemical. So it's it's pretty much inert for humans. I, I, I don't think there's enough research out there to find out what's going on. And you know how that is. Research comes afterwards. Um, uh, but uh, we do know that chloramines are not good for your corals if you have a fish tank. And also chloramines burn out your RO membrane. So the RO membrane will still catch and remove the chloramines from the water, but it will substantially reduce the life of the membrane. And then you'll have to change it a lot quicker. So instead of changing it once a year, now you're going to have to change it once every six months. And at the price of those membranes, it's a hell of a lot better just to change the pre-filters. That's yeah. what Dave is referring to. So a rule of thumb is for the price of the chloramine filters, which is not that much, um, a weird rule of thumb is just assume that your city has chloramines. That's pretty much, that, that. that's what I would recommend. Just assume that, put them in there, and then you'll be safe and sorry. Because again, like Dave says, there is no, I mean, most of the cities don't have, um, uh, you don't have to get the approval from the from the constituents in order to get the chloramine in the water. I don't think so. So uh, you today they could have no chloramines, and next week they could have chloramines. So if you test today, and then a month from now, you know, it could be added. So it's just better to do it, all right? Yep. So, um, water filtration. I know that Re Port Wolf said uh, you should you should talk how REI systems can benefit and have wacky problems when using whole home water treatment systems. Yes, that is a completely different subject that we're not going to get to because it's just too big, and we just don't have enough time. But what I would recommend is go online and ask questions, Facebook or contact us via support, and we'll be able to help you out with that when it's a little more specialized. Yep. You know. Um, uh, so uh, I wish we could talk about a port, but uh, we just don't have the time. Otherwise, uh, it's going to get the, the show is going to get a little too long. OK, <laughs> a little too long. All right. So now the question is, Dave, you know, why do we want to make, a, you know, it seems like the RODI system works. You can just yeah. plug it into your to your faucet, turn it on and that's it and leave it on. Why do I need to make it better? What well, benefits we do I get? Yeah, I mean, one thing you, you you may not know just by turning it on is do you have enough incoming water pressure? Um, mm -hmm. you, you really need to be at over 50 PSI. Um, if, you know, having this handy glycerin gauge will, will let you know what that pressure is coming in. But a lot of people don't have enough pressure to adequately run um, the, the required pressure needed to make it through these membranes. 
at that point, yes. you, you, your option is is to add a, a booster pump. Okay, so 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 we want to make it better by you know those those membranes are rated at particular pressure and just like anything else they have a sweet spot, yeah. they have a sweet spot. Any pressure below that and the membrane is not efficient. Any pressure above that and the membrane is not efficient. But if you put the pressure within the range, then that membrane is going to be able to filter out things and be the most efficient. Otherwise, the life of the membrane goes away. Another thing that Connor said, you know, please also mention the best practices of backwashing the membranes or flushing the membrane. And yes, the problem with manual units, like the basic unit on picture number one, and I'm going to have April go back to picture number one. The problem with those units is that it doesn't flush. Just like anything else, um, um, you know, water sitting in the unit when it's not being used accumulates. And then what you want to do before you start filtration is you want to run water through it to flush as much as you can out of the membrane without that water going into your reservoir. And Correct. then after flushing, then you terminate the flushing and then start producing water. And you do this every time. And ideally, you would want to do this when the unit starts working and you would want it to, you want it to do it as well on certain intervals while the unit is producing water. Obviously, those units are simple and they're basic. So most likely, most people are, gonna, are just going to flush when they first start and then that's it which shortens the life of the membrane so i mean as you can see any type of filtration there's a lot of things that 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 go into the efficiency of the unit you know pressure is one uh we haven't talked about temperature temperature is another one the yeah. colder the water the harder it is so that's why during the winter, you don't get as much water as you get during the summer. And then you also have flushing the unit. So, you know, it's uh, most of the most of the most of the, uh, the manufacturers out there and retailers, they, they rate the units at a certain gallon per hour. But that rating, you have to remember that rating is based on everything being perfect. Right. I mean, it has to be, you have to be, the temperature has to be 70 plus, the pressure has to be, you know, 90 to 100, you know, you have to flush it every hour for, for 60 seconds. If you do all that, then you'll get the advertised gallons per hour. If you don't do any of those three things, or you, do, you don't do one of those three things, your production level goes down. And that's just the nature of the beast. It's just like with anything, any, any other filter. But okay so we're trying to make this unit so what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase the efficiency of those filtration units so we increase the, the efficiency by um, uh, adding a booster pump that will that'll help because especially if you don't have enough pressure what else can we do to increase the efficiency of the unit dave well you can add uh, additional membranes to it as well you can add okay. increase the um the add-ons to it okay you can do that. You can also add a TDS meter, which, you yeah. know, to show you when, you know, it's not going to increase the efficiency, but it's going to make it so that it's easier for you to predict when to change, you know, the water. Also, you, the way you run the unit has a lot to do with how the water, how the unit is efficient. A unit that runs for a long period of time without stopping and going is going to be far more efficient than a unit that runs for 15 minutes, stops for 10, 15 minutes, stops for 10 and 15 minutes. That start that go and that stop and go, stop and go, stop and go will eat up on the membrane. Yeah. So um, um you know and that's what we're gonna talk about in the second part of this show on how to prevent that from happening. All right. So let's go to T TDS meters. You know, yeah. very important completely underrated sometime, you know, but what do TDS meters do for us? What do they do, Dave? Well, this is going to give you the window into your water quality. Um, you know, really without it, you, you really kind of had a guess. Well, when should I replace filters? What, what filter should I replace? Uh, it, it's really a, a, just a window into your maintenance of this machine. And, yes. Uh, without it, you really you kind of run in blind uh, in a way. Um, so it's uh, to me, it's it's really critical that you able to measure this. And yes. Take action based off of that reading. 
It's it it just takes away the blindness of 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 RDI water. I mean, water is clear to begin with, so there's no way for the human eye to detect how dirty that water is. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's clear. It's it looks good. It's but it technically it isn't. But the TDS meter will do that. It'll tell you exactly what the total dissolved organics are in the water, and then based on that reading, you can assess. Okay. It's time, is it time for me to change the filters? Is it time for me to change the pre-filters and so forth? Yes, most manufacturers tell you to run it, you know, change the pre-filter six months, but then that is a range because at the end of the day, you don't want to change the, the, the pre-filters if you're only running the every six months, if you're only running the unit for once every couple of weeks, that just seems, you know, that just seems crazy. But if you're running the unit every single day, then obviously six months is too far and you might have to do it for four months. Having a TDS meter that tells you what, how much TDS are, you know, and as the filters get wasted, you can see the total dissolved organics go up from zero, creep to five, to 10, to 20. And at that point you're like, okay, you know, I'm going to have to rechange the filter. You know? I really like to, to mention dual or even triple uh, redundancy readings on the TDS. And why is yeah. that? If you're just reading your source water and it, it starts going up, you don't necessarily know what's going back. Could be your DI resin. Yes. RO itself. And at yes, that point, can. well, then you think, well, I guess I'll replace everything. Well, you may only need to replace DI resin or you may only need to replace the RO. And so you're kind of spending more money, not really knowing uh, where the, the actual problem is. Funny you should say that, Dave, because, you know, the next part of the show that I was going to get into, and it, it's a great segue, is where do we install those meters? Because the TVS meter comes with two probes. So, yeah. you know, I. Uh, Intuition tells me that, okay, one probe has to be on the output. I want to know at the end of the unit, once the water makes it through the entire filter, what is the reading on that? That's great because if, if that's going up, then I have to change filters. But right. then how do I know when I have to change the DI or how do I know when I have to change the pre-filter or how do I know when I have to change the RO membrane? That's based on when do you where do you put that second filter? So right. I'm going to have our producer here, um, um, uh, April, you know, start showing us some pictures you know give me picture number uh number three um uh, april that would be great okay so as you can see right here the tds meter is being placed after the pre-filters so dave we have the meter number two after the pre-filters and meter number one after the unit obviously yep. as we talked about unit number one tells us when the the, the amount the tds at the end of the filtration process. But how do we benefit by putting the TDS meter after the pre-filters, but before the membrane? What does that do to us? What does that do? What, really, what kind of information do we get? Yeah, after those, uh, those two membranes really take the initial brunt of the filtration process and, and you can get a good idea um, you know, where you stand, if that, that TDS uh, number is rising, you know, okay, let me replace uh, stage one and two. So exactly. that gives you a, a good idea of, you know, you, you're trying to prolong the, the life of that RO membrane, which is the, the most expensive uh, you know, uh, membrane uh, filtration replacement in the whole machine. Yes. So that that's the the idea behind reading at that point. Perfect. So, you know, so when you install that pre when you start and when you install that probe on after the pre filters, you're gonna get you turn on the unit, let it run for you know five minutes, let it settle down, and then look at the reading, and that's your base reading. That's how much a brand new filter pre filter a brand new set of pre filters is gonna give you. Then you set your you set your base and from there if it starts to go up substantially then you know you have to change it so remember it's never going to be zero there because the pre-filters cannot filter everything but it's going to give you a base to give you that all right april let's go to the next the next picture we're going to do uh, picture number four okay so now dave in this picture we've put we've installed um, um the second tds meter after the RO, the RO membrane and before the DI resin. Yep. What does that help us? What kind of information does that provide us? Well, that gives you a, a really a, a good window into the, uh, the life of your, your RO membrane. Correct. And if you're watching that number uh, substantially increase, 
then you know that's that part is is, is going to be in need of replacement correct so again this is something that is not going to give you zero so you're probably going to get like maybe like five i think yeah. on that one on output again you're looking for a baseline so you yeah. ch you change your membrane you flush the membrane for an hour or however time the manufacturer tells you and then you take a snapshot and then that snapshot is you're starting your base point and then you go from there like dave said if it goes up substantially then you know you have to change that membrane okay all right and then we're going to go to picture number five, which is one of the most common setups in there. And what we've done in this one right here is the second probe is actually before the membrane. So Dave, tell me about this. How, how, what does this tell us? What, what information do we get from this? this is your, you're basically you're reading your actual water supply at this point and what that source water coming into the unit itself is giving you a window into what you're trying to take it down to um, exactly higher the, the incoming uh you know it's it's going to take a lot more effort to get that uh reading at one to zero yes yeah so so that's again just we're looking for base points and you're looking for the quality of your water i mean yep. um you know, and, and you know, Dave and I live in different cities. Dave is in Slidell, New Orleans, and I'm in Chicago. And I can tell you, there is a huge, and I mean a huge difference in water quality between his town and, and Chicago. I mean, here in Chicago, we're lucky because we have the Great Lakes. So our water is relatively clean. I mean, my water is around, you know, 80 to 100 TDS. Uh, Dave, what is your water around? I'm, I'm lucky if I can get anything less than 250 exactly so you can tell times so that's an example again of the environment you know putting pressure into the rdi unit and affecting its its performance obviously dave's is going to have to change those pre-filters much more frequently than i would have to you know so you know uh okay so talking about the tds meter i know uh, jeff benedict had a great question he says you know the the tds meter comes with a battery compartment and then it connects to the uh, hydros unit. You know, if you have the TDS meter that connects to the hydros unit, it gets its power from the hydros. Right. If you have the TDS meter that is a standalone from Auto Aqua, it looks similar to that one. That one does need a battery to work with. Yeah, if you, so open, this one, if you open up the hydros version of the door on it, there's no battery. There's no so battery because you do not tricky. need one. Yes, but you know what? At the same time, it's like, why reinvent the wheel? Um, uh, you know, you're yeah. not going to come up with a new mold for a new TDS meter that has no battery, then, then the price goes up. So yeah. it's, it's, and it's wasteful. It's easier just to use the same one without the battery and, 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 and send it to you and be able to call the same price. So again, yeah. we're not trying to charge you extra for things that you really don't need. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's great. So we've learned how to do the, how to you know the the position the, where to put the TDS meter. Again, you're watching CVTV workshop. We're we're talking about hourly ice today. We're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. So please, if you like the show, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, or just click on that bell, and you'll be yeah. notified right away. Also, if you have any questions, you can always, always head over to forum.coralviewhydros.com. Hey, we have a great community of people, and a lot of the users that you see here on the show are there willing to help, or sometimes even asking questions. You know, everybody, everybody learns something every single day. So there is no stupid question. The only stupid question no. is, this, is the one that is not asked. So <laughs> please, you have the resources, okay? so. Dave, let's talk about how the RODI unit, a simple RODI unit setup. I went to the store and I bought myself a simple RODI unit and, and then how do I set it up? So I'm gonna ask April to go to picture number seven. So there's a basic RODI unit setup. No, nothing smart about it, nothing fancy, you know, um, it's just a, a unit that you kind of like, you're, you're kind of automating it, but you're not making it smart. Does that, if, if that makes any sense, you're not having any automatic flushing. You're not having any, any, anything tell the, any sensors telling the unit that it's the, 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 the container, the tank, the sump is full or not. It's just a basic, basic, uh, installation. And tell me the, po the pros and the cons of this installation, Dave, what's so good about it? And, and what's not so good about it? 
Well, I mean, the good thing is, is you, you do have some, some automation here in, in terms of what you're able to do with the controller. Mm -hmm. um, it may not be as a robust uh, system um, that we actually have with our, uh, our smart version of these the RODI units. But this gives you a, a nice automated system and, and what you can do in terms of with the controller and, and that, the control too here. Yeah, so technically in this case, guys, you have a basic RODI unit that you get from CoralView or you get it from any other, your local fish store or any major online retailer. And all you're doing is putting a, a literally a solenoid in it that is yep. going to turn the unit. If the solenoid is open, the unit is gonna make water. If the solenoid is not open, then the unit is not gonna make any water. And then you have a simple water sensor at the top of the reservoir, and that is going to turn the unit, that is gonna tell the control when to turn the solenoid. It's simple, yeah. it's great, and it's what most people do basically. But there's some cons about this. You know, One of them is, the efficiency of the unit is not that high. Why? There is, you're relying on the pressure from your faucet. And remember how we talked about different pressures and there's a sweet spot on the membrane. If you happen to have the good pressure, then it's all gonna be good. But if you don't have any good pressure, then that unit is gonna produce a lot more wastewater than actual filtered water. Another thing you have here is the optical water sensor is only at the top of the reservoir. So what happens is as soon as the water level drops just a few millimeters below the water sensor, it will turn the unit back on. So technically your ROI unit is turning on for 15, 20 minutes, how long it takes to go up the water sensor and then wait an hour and then turn back on for 15, 20 minutes, wait an hour and turn back on, depending on your evaporation. So your unit is constantly turning back on and off. And as we established that before, that process shortens the life of the membrane. So there's a few things that, that, that we could make a lot more uh, efficient in here and a lot more um, um, uh, reliable as well. And we're gonna talk about those in the next segment. So. Before we move on to the next segment, though, I want to say hello to Connor Sloan. Uh, Sean Beaver is here. It's, I haven't seen Sean in a while. It's good to have him back. Bob Winfrey is there. Jeff Benedek is here as well. So this is fun, guys. We're talking here. We are talking about RDI units, the CBTV workshops, and that we're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Now, Dave, going back to the TDS meter sense because I forgot. There is a correct way and a bad way to install a TDS meter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You actually want to look at the, the the leads on these probes, and there's a, a correct way to install these when you're setting this up. I think we yeah, have an image of that. Yeah, and I'm going to ask April to put picture number uh, six dash two on the screen, please. And there you go. Look yeah. at the leads at the bottom. There's this two little wires sticking out of the probe, and the two wires. Are, and you can see how they're, they're inserted into a, you know, a quick connect T, all right? The correct way to install them is the two wires or the two leads have to be perpendicular, perpendicular yeah. to the T. You see that? Yeah. And the incorrect way is to be parallel. Now, some people may claim that it doesn't make a difference, but it really does make a difference if you're trying to read that low as zero, one, two, three, and five. So at that point, you should really adjust it. If you're trying to read only 100, then it's not gonna make a difference. But if you try to go to a zero, to a, to, to down to zero, it's better if you do it that way, you know? So that's that's the one thing I forgot to, 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 um, to mention when we're doing the TDS meter, all right? So, on the next segment, we're going to be talking about how to upgrade and how to make your simple RODI water filtration uh, unit that you bought on your at your local fish store and make it smarter by connecting it to the hydros world. But before we go there, we're going to have a pretty much word from our sponsor.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to CVTV Workshops. Here is my name is Carlos, host, and my co-host, David Dockin, owner of CoralView. We're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Before we start, Dave, I got to say, those commercials are getting pretty fancy, aren't they? <laughs> I love them. I know. I, know, I, love I, know. <laughs> I know. Jeez, you know, our, our producer here, April, she's, yeah. she's, she's such a great job i love it it's like every time she keeps upping that one and this one is really good i mean it's like a yeah. it's a typical water filtration you think you think that hinkley smith has that you know yeah. so that's awesome that was a pretty cool video thank you april all Hi. right so so let's talk about hydros and how yeah. we can connect an rodi unit um and i'm not going to go through the basic stuff I'm going to go right to the, the thing right. that, everybody, that, 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 that everybody likes, and it is, how do I make my simple yet good ROI unit even smarter? How do I make it hydro smart? You yeah. know? And this is the cool thing, because there's no other controller out there that has this feature at this time. I know people have been asking for it, but they're not getting it until you know, <laughs> Hydros comes in and, and does it for you. So, all right. So I have a handy dandy little container here. And then, you know, I can see, you can see it's got two little sensors, a top sensor and a bottom sensor. Okay, look at that. Everybody, all the all the pros are like, oh, I like that. You know, it's not just a top sensor or a bottom sensor. But before we do that, let's talk about the Hydros, the upcoming Hydros Smart RODI Upgrade Kit. Okay, and this is a product. This is a kit that we're going to be putting out for everybody to purchase on CoralView.com or at your local fish store or online store. And what's going to do is it's going to have everything you need in order to make your simple RODI unit smart. Okay, so the kit includes two water sensors. Okay, one for the top. We call it a high water sensor, a high reservoir sensor, and a low reservoir sensor. It includes two solenoids. So not only you can turn the unit on, but you can also automatically flush the unit. It has a booster pump to make sure that the water is has the correct pressure from the um, when it's passing through the membrane, it has a high pressure solenoid, which allows the unit to when the container is full, if the container is full, and the sensor at the top fails, because again, I, you know, we, we, we're going to be transparent here, Dave, you know, yeah. it's not it, it's not a matter of it's not, it's not a matter of if it fails, it's a matter of when it fails. Let's let's just be real about it, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, so the high pressure sensor will automatically shut off the um, uh, booster pump so it doesn't keep building the pressure and everything leaks. And then there's the power supply for the booster pump and the pressure sensor. And on top of this, it'll also include some hardware like regular T's so you can, cre so you can uh, create a bypass for your flushing because a lot of the units don't have a way to flush automatically. But this is the basic kit, you know, and we'll have also a, um, We'll have also a version of the Control 2 that is going to be the Control 2 Control 2 RODI, mm -hmm. you know, that you can buy the Control 2 for your RODI unit. And then there's also, you know, and you can actually purchase also as, a, uh, as an individual part. So if you want just a booster pump with the high pressure and the power supply, you can get that if you just want the solenoids and so, so it's a la carte. Anyway, but that's what it includes. Hey, I, I'd like to add to this too, Carlos. You know, a lot of times people have their water uh, in another location, but they want to yes. have the the controller tied into their collective. Yes, um, we do provide uh, cables that we make up here um, for a longer length, so you can have that connection, a data connection to your complete collective. Exactly. So, you know, and I'm going to go into, we're going to go into details on that one. And I'm going to give you an example of, of, of what, how that works really well, especially if you have your, you know, my water ROI unit is in the garage, which is behind this tank. Uh, and the water sent in my freshwater reservoir is incorporated into my ice cap sump. Yep. Go ice cap. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so, but the problem is that my water reservoir is here and my RODI unit is in the garage. Right. So how do I how do I make my RODI unit turn off 
based on the sensors that are here. And I don't think there's any other controller out there that does this unless you run wires through, you know, unless you pretty much run wires or have an electrician come in and do that for you. So there, there's gotta be an easy way and we do that for you. Okay, so I'm gonna have, um, so I already, cre I, I'm gonna create this for you guys and show you everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have April switch over to my shared screen. So everybody, you can see my little control, core of your control here. And I got some basic stuff in there. I have a protein skimmer return. I have two Tunsi pumps. You know, we love Roger at Tunsi. He's, he's awesome. He's always yeah. so good to work with and so easy to work with. So guys, it, you know, we at Coralview have some great pumps, but Tunsi also has great pumps. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we at Coralview, we don't want to make you buy something. We just want to give you an option, okay? Yep. So I have a pumps. So I'm going to refresh the controller here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, or April, let's go back to me. I'm sorry about that. And as you can see right here, I have a little ROI container, my little ROI container here, <laughs> my, my, my pseudo ROI container. And I've, I've put a sensor at the bottom. And it's just a regular water sensor. And you know what? I didn't have another extra water sensor. So I actually used a skimmer sensor at the top. They're water sensors. You can use them anyway. The software is what assigns what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of sensor it's going to be. If it's a skimmer sensor or it's going to be a water sensor, it doesn't matter. The sensor itself physically is the same. So I have those two here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go back to the, the shared camera here. And I'm going to go ahead and add the two sensors. So I'm going to create inputs. I'm going to go first input, add input. I'm going to go ahead and hit plus, and I'm going to call it reservoir high. Okay. And it's going to be a sense port. Okay. And I connected the high level to, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's a water level. And it's on my sense port one of my controller. And you know what? I don't need alarms for this one. I could do alarms if I wanted to, but at this point, I don't want alarms. So I'm just going to select this to none. I'm going to go ahead and upload my changes. All right. So there you go. It was fast. OK, I'm going to go back to my status screen right here. And as you can see, I have reservoir high. And yes, it's dry. We know this. It's dry. So let me go ahead and add the reservoir low. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, hit another plus symbol. I'm going to type reservoir low, create. Again, it's going to be a sense port. It's going to be a water sensor. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a skimmer sensor or a water sensor. As I, you know, I just tell the software how to treat it. So I'm going to do water sensor. And again, I'm not, I just don't want any notifications. It's fine with me, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and click upload. So now I've created two sensors, or I've literally created two inputs that tell me if my my RODI reservoir, in this case, this little dandy two gallon thing is, is it's full or not. That's it. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is now I'm going to create the RODI input and I have the two solenoids, you know, and I have the booster pump and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, um, add here and I'm going to go ahead and call this. Let's call it RODI. Simple. Check this out. Create. I'm going to go to type. I'm going to scroll down and look at that. ROI filter. Isn't that amazing <laughs> how easy that is? OK, so now I'm going to have a WYSIWYG in here that is going to walk me through the process. No coding. I don't have to figure out how to tie everything. I don't have to figure out the order of things. I mean, and this would be very complicated to do on other controllers that require you to write code. OK, yep. but on, on the hydros, it's simple. Listen. So feeder output device, that's going to be my solenoid that is the first solenoid. I could put it, remember how we talked about the three locations? We could put it before the, um, um, before the RODI unit. We could put it before the RO membrane, or we could put it after you know, um, uh, or, I'm sorry, no, we, get, we put it before the ROI unit or we put it after, before the ROI membrane. For this case, for this unit to work correctly, you're going to have to put the um, um, solenoid number one, you're going to have to put it before the membrane. So I'm going to have, um, um, I'm going to have uh, uh, April show picture number 10.
Okay, so you see that, and I kind of jumped ahead on this one right here. You know what, April? Let's show picture number uh, picture number eight. I'm sorry about that. So there's the booster pump. So the the kit comes with the booster pump. You install the booster pump. You see how you install the booster pump between the carbon filter and the membrane. So you're literally going to have to cut the line on your RLEI kit and then extend it so that you can install the booster pump. So from the carbon filter, which is the middle filter, you take that line and, it's, and take it out of the R membrane and put it into the booster pump and then take the other line and, and, and do, so you're putting the booster pump in the middle, okay? All right, so let's go to picture number, um, um, number uh, 10. Okay, so now you can see here is the feed solenoid. And that one is placed, you see that line between the carbon filter and the booster pump. Now you're gonna cut that line and you're gonna install the first solenoid. Make sure that the solenoid, at the bottom of the solenoid, there's a little arrow that points up the direction. So make sure that you actually follow the arrows in here. You can see how Jeremy, our graphic designer, created arrows in there. So you gotta make sure that the solenoid is actually put in the same direction. Okay, so now the next part of the kit, we have a high pressure um, uh, solenoid, and that one is uh, picture number nine. All right, you can see right there, the high pressure solenoid on your regular RLDI unit, you're gonna have a line going from the, from the, uh, from a, some type of solenoid to the arrow membrane output. So there is where you put that little black high pressure solenoid. All right. And then the last part is going to be the flushing membrane. Let's go to picture number 11. In picture number 11, you see on the left, you have most of the arrow that units have this, this valve slash restrictor. So when the, when the, when the valve is one way, it becomes a restrictor so that it forces, it push, pushes back on water to create pressure. So it goes through the RLDI membrane, through the arrow membrane and gets filtered. And then if you, if you move that valve to the opposite, to the other, uh, you know, a quarter of a turn, then it becomes fully open. And that's what you do flushing, um, uh, but you have to do it manually. So yeah. in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to create a bypass. You're going to, you're going to cut before the flushing slash um, restrictor and after it, and then you're gonna tee together, you see how you create a bypass on the after. And that's where you put the second white solenoid. And again, just make sure that you follow those arrows. Okay, so let's go back to our, our handy dandy screen in here. All right, so now feed output device. That's the one that I put before, right? Uh, that's the one that I put um, um, solenoid number, number one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and connect it to my drive port number one, okay? And then the flushing solenoid, that's the one that we created that bypass on that very last picture. That's number two. Now we did have a third solenoid in there. It was a black solenoid. That one actually gets connected directly to the booster pump and its own power supply. There's no need to control it. That one, what it does is if the pressure builds up too much, then the solenoid is gonna cut the power to the booster pump and shut it off. So there's no need for the controller to do that. So that one works on its own, okay? Next, booster output point device. And I can pretty much add it anywhere. I didn't add any Wi-Fi strips to this one right now and you would have a single there. So if I had a single, I would pretty much have it here. It would say single or it would say Wi-Fi output number one, outlet number two. I'm gonna leave it as none for this for now, but you can change it as far as you want. High level input. That is going to be my water sensor high. So I'm gonna call it, there you go. It automatically go to reservoir high. And low level input is gonna be my reservoir low. Leak detector, if I had a leak detector, I would use it. So you know what? I do have a rope leak detector, so I'm gonna do that. Then you have start time and end time. If you want to run on a schedule where you know the unit is too loud and uh, it's under the bathroom, near the bedroom, and your wife says that thing is too loud, you can't run it during the nighttime, you have to run it during the day when I'm not here. So then you put it between 10 and 10 p.m. Or if it's somewhere you know, in the garage and, and it's too loud during the day, then you put it between midnight and six o'clock in the morning, whatever you want to do. Active modes, you can decide when the RLI unit could be active or not. 
if you're doing a water change, I definitely don't want the RDI unit to turn on, you know, but otherwise I want it to turn on. So I'm going to take that off. Depends on, I could easily say, you know, I could easily have the RDI unit if my return pump is off for whatever reason, then don't turn the RDI unit. I don't want to make any water, you know, that's perfectly fine. And then you have some advanced settings in here that allow you to, um, um, feed minimum off time, feed minimum on time, and all this, just to make sure that the unit doesn't turn on and turn off rapidly. But in this case, I'm gonna leave it off, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and upload my changes, okay? And here we go. And now we have, go back to status and take a look at that. All of a sudden, now we have three icons that appear here. One is your icon for your solenoid feed. There's an icon for the flush, and there's an icon for your RDI boost. As you can see right here, it's got everything you need. Automatically done without having to do a single line of programming. That's how easy it is. Now, let's take a look at this. I'm going to grab my handy uh, April. Uh, can we do a split screen within, between, between my shared screen and myself? Can you make it? Yeah, thank you, April. I th I don't know if you can make it a little, you can move that a little bit more, or, you know, maybe I can do this. Uh, maybe that works. Is that better? Ah, yes, that's better. That's better. So I'm going to scroll up in here. So take a look at this. I have my little handy dandy reservoir right here. All right, I'm going to put it right here so everybody can see. I have a little bit of water right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is literally is I am going to pretty much pour water into this as if I'm making RDI water. So look and see the two icons, the RDI feed and the booster pump are turned on. So it's making water right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring water in here. And as you can see now I'm covering, look at that, my reservoir low is wet. The RDI unit continues to make water. It's still making water, as you can see, all right? And then I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna keep pouring water in here and I'm gonna see if everything, if I made enough water in here to do that. So I'm pouring water, the RDI unit is passing, hours are passing by and uh, so, so on, so on. And all of a sudden, okay. And all of a sudden the high sensor is now wet. Take a look at that. So the reservoir high now is wet. What happened to the RDI unit feed and flush and booster pump? They're completely off. That's it. The unit automatically shut off. Now, let me go ahead and start taking water off from here. I'm gonna take water out of this to make the sensor dry. And instead of taking water, I'm just gonna raise the sensor up. So take a look at this. I'm gonna raise the sensor up. Okay, it's going to refresh eventually, dry. Okay, and now the RDI unit is gonna stay off for about five minutes and then it's gonna turn back on automatically. All right, and when it turns back on, then it's, it's going to continue to be on until the bottom sensor becomes dry. Once the bottom sensor becomes dry, then the RDI unit will turn on by itself. How does that help us, you know, create a better RDI unit? And it does by preventing the unit from running all the time or running often. A lot of the RDI units that we have at this time right now, as soon as this sensor becomes dry, the RDI unit turns on. So you're all constantly, you, the water drops and then you fill it up. So you're constantly almost taking water, you know, in lack of a better term, you're taking water from the top and then refilling it. But by using the hydro system, it actually waits until the water goes all the way down and then it turns on the unit and brings it back all the way out, up and makes more water. Again, saving, running your RDI unit a lot longer and also um, uh, preventing the unit from running often all the time, yeah. okay? So that's what the RDI unit, smart RDI unit will do. And uh, you know, you can, um, you can have, the other thing that this RDI unit does that you don't have to worry about programming it on the hydros control is the hydros control automatically knows when you first turn on the RDI unit, 
it's going to flush and it's going to flush for a minute so that flush tile is going to turn on and then when you produce water for an hour after an hour of producing water it's going to flush again for 60 seconds and then it's going to resume and make more water and it's going to for as long as it takes to fill this uh, to, to get the two sensors wet, every hour is going to flush for uh, 60 seconds automatically, making sure that your RODI unit is, is kept flush and clean and optimized so that the RO membrane and the DI and the pre-filters last as long as possible. And that's what the RODI unit does. There is no controller in the market that does it except for the hydros. Most controllers have only the top sensor and that's what they do. And they force you to turn the unit every so often. Okay. But, um, uh, you know, the hydros allows you to have two sensors and it uses what we call statefulness where it actually turns, it, it waits. It has a, stat, uh, a state called drain. If the two, if this one is dry, the top one is dry, and the bottom is is, is wet, it's gonna it's gonna be draining. It's gonna be used. It's gonna take water away, and the R unit is gonna be off. Once that bottom sensor becomes dry, the controller puts it into a filling state, and the filling state means that now it's gonna ignore the bottom sensor, and it's only gonna shut off the R the I unit when the top sensor is dry. Mm -hmm. So, draining state means ignore the ignore the bot the top sensor and wait until the bottom sensor becomes dry filling state means ignore the bottom sensor and only turn on the bar and only turn off the R the unit until the top sensor becomes wet so that's how the unit remembers how to do that that's that's it's got it's a it's a it's a variation of statefulness it's not a full statefulness but it is there what happens when you lose power let's say you lose power and in the middle of draining or in the middle of filling okay because you don't want to use that RODI unit and you don't want to turn it on so often what it does is as soon as the controller comes back on it'll assume you're draining so if it's halfway like this right now and then the controller comes back on to power um, uh, then the unit is automatically, the controller is automatically going to assume that you're draining. So it's going to stop the RDI unit and it's going to wait, it's going to revert back to wait until this bottom sensor is dry, at which point it's going to turn the RDI unit and bring it back up. Okay. Because if you lose power, you're draining, the RDI unit is running, you lose power for a split second, you lose power for five minutes, and then you get power back on, and then it continues to fill, then you're, you're turning on the RDI unit on shut off for five minutes and then turning it back on. And we want to minimize the amount of beating that goes into that RODI unit, okay? So that is the RODI unit pretty much in a nutshell on the control. And that's how easy it is to use it, you know? So now we have some questions in here. Do you need a booster pump? You do not, you do not. As you can see right here, um, uh, and I'm going to ask my uh, producer, April, again, to come back and uh, show me something right here and uh, show the uh, screen. As you can see, if I don't have a booster pump, I just leave it as none. That's pretty much it. You know, um, uh, if you know, if I don't have a leak rope detector, I can just leave it as unused. That's pretty much, that's that's perfectly fine in here. Um, uh, the only thing you have that, you know, if you only have a feed solenoid or you can use them, you won't need, you, 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 you could say none in here, but then if you don't have a feed solenoid and a flush solenoid, then you're defeating the purpose and it's not gonna work correctly because then you're not having that automation, that flushing thing. So if you really want the unit to work, if you want this upgrade to work as a, as a real upgrade, then we recommend that you get the two, then you get the kit, the two solenoids, the booster pump, and the two water, the, the, the two water sensors. That really gives you that, that really will upgrade the unit and make it truly smart. Otherwise, you're kind of just making it a glorified high unit, but it's really not gonna be smart because it can't do what it needs to keep that membrane clean and the flushing and the automatic shot off and everything that does it, okay? So Dave, what do you think of this? I love it. I love it. I, I love the, the integration of bringing a, a TDS 
uh, into uh, control, and, you know, because like we said, without having TDS reading, you're really running blind. Yes. And, uh, what we can do now with being able to, to read TDS through the controller brings us into a whole nother realm. Um, being able to monitor that, uh, you know, being able to call up when you want to make water. And exactly. Away from home and, and having a window into uh, how's my water quality looking or getting a notification when your TDS uh, is, is raised above uh, a set point that you want to be notified. Uh, it really just uh, takes us to a whole nother level in automation, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, have uh, April, you know, share my screen again one more time. And I'm going to show you right here. This is my regular system right here, not an example system that I'm using. But this is my regular system. As you can see, I actually have the units right here. So let me go ahead and do a uh, H2A station right here. So mm -hmm. everybody, everybody it's a little bit cleaner to see. But look at this. I actually have a wet and dry. I have the um, uh, the RDI units in here. And I don't have them connected right now, um, um, you know, because I was, I was working with them and trying to you know, do this for the for the for the test in here. So, but what I wanted to show is the TDS meter right here. There's that TDS meter, and I can add that TDS meter even though the TDS meter is not actually in here. I can actually use or I can actually create a generic. I could put a generic output in here that says TDS. You know, and then what I can do is I can select. The, uh, I can send it a generic, then I can go to TDS RDI, input low point four, input high point five. So let's make it, you know, let's make it 10 and the low point is gonna be zero. And then I can put active when TDS is low, okay? And then has schedule and just leave it at that and go ahead and turn it on. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a output that is going to um, uh, tell me if this output, this output is going to be, this output is going to be on if my TDS is below 10. If my TDS is above 10, then this output is going to be off. So what I can do is I can grab my TDS, my RDI unit, go back to depends on, and I can make it TDS, and then on if on. Or I could say TDS off if off. So go ahead and upload that. And what will happen on that case is if my, uh, still right there, if my TDS meter is on, then the RLDI unit is going to be on. Again, these ones are not working because I, I, I'm not, I don't have them fully set, but that's what would happen. So you can actually base it off the TDS meter as well if you wanted to. Okay? So that's that's how you can do it on the TDS meter. So you don't have to base it off of it because a lot of people don't want to shut off the, the, the RDI unit if it's going to be 10 or something. They just want to be warned. That is, yeah. uh, you know, especially if you have a, if you have a, a, a mature tank, um, uh, you know, if you have 10 or five, it's going to be able to, the, the, the mature tank, the material in the mature tank is going to be able to handle it if you have a new tank. So the person might be, might want to be warned that it's high, but it might not necessarily want to shut off the, the water. You know, yep. it depends. So that's how you do it. That's how you incorporate the TDS meter into the RODI system. You know? I'd like to make note too that on this sensor, it's, it's the lead on the left that needs to be reading your source water. And the one on the right would read uh, from your RO membrane. So the one on the left, that is sensor number one. And on the app, you can see that that's your your source water on yours, Carlos. So you're reading one is at zero, and then I think another you had like 120, maybe your incoming water. So just a just a note on that for when you're installing it. Correct. You know, and then I have another thing in here. Jeff Brendedek just uh, put a question there. Says. Um, um, are the RDI sensors ports uh, strictly inputs, or can they use can be used at com in a combiner? They are um, 
Depends on the inputs. That means the water sensors, they are inputs. You can use the water sensors for the R or the I, and you can use them for other things. In terms of the outputs for the um, R or the I, you can use them on a combiner as well. So you can get really, really fancy on a combiner if you wanted to. They're treated as a combiner. Okay. So that just gives you an example of, of what the R or the I unit uh, does in, in terms of. Um, um, what it can do and how it can work. And let me go back to the um, let me go back to the screen. Um, April, can we share the screen again? All right. And there you go. As I can see, you know, and I set this one up. The high reservoir is dry. The wet reservoir, the the low reservoir is long. Therefore, the RDI unit, the feed is on, the booster pump is on, but the flush is not on. And it's going to continue to do that. Now look at that. The flush turned on, and then it's going to wait a little bit, and then the RDI unit is going to turn back on again. So um, uh, it, it's just an easy way to. It's just an easier way to make sure that everything is installed correctly. You know, there's no programming. You don't have to worry about the lines. You don't have to worry about the order in which the lines are or how you're going to accomplish this. And as I recall correctly on the other controllers, there's no way to have the controller ignore one sensor while it waits for the other sensor and then backwards. But switch back and forth is something that it cannot be done. That can only be done so far with the hydros. They may do it in the future, but then they're just copying us. OK. <laughs> All right. So again, thank you for watching. If you're watching this show, it's live. We're uh, Coral View Workshops live. We're talking about RDI units and the hydro systems. If you like the show, if you enjoy the show, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, or hit that like button in there. You know, and, and, and then you'll get notifications from us telling you when we have the shows. And as you can see, we cover hydro stuff. But at the beginning of the show, we also cover the basic information about the product. If you want to know what an RDI unit is for, if you want to know what a return pump is for, we have previous shows that we've covered that. And Dave and I, have, you know, we've been in the hobby for, you know, combined 40, 40 plus years. And, and, and we're always happy to share our knowledge in here, uh, share our opinions. You know, you take them or yeah, you leave them, it's up to you. But we, we like to, and we always love to help. We want to say thank you to David Polson, Mark Kinnery, Don is here, uh, Jeff Benedek, Wendy is here. Thank you again, everybody, for, for coming and visiting us. We really appreciate that. Dave, so far, so good, right? Yeah, sounds good, man. We steadily trying to, to, to keep bringing and innovating and I wish things were, were going faster in, in terms of what we have uh, in store for this product line. And unfortunately, we're just dealing with some extreme issues and supply chains. And yeah, everybody's dealing with those control going on in the world today. But uh, yes. believe me, it's coming. We work yes. hard, so stay with us. And yeah, eye on what we're doing. If you have. Yeah. If if you have any questions on um, how to program, you know, I mean, we lightly pro we lightly touch upon this. But um, uh, if you have any questions on how to program the R the I unit or more in depth, please, please, you can uh, you can visit our our, our forum Hydros Coral View Hydros. So it's forum dot Hydros dot com. And again, there's a lot of people there that are always willing to help. There's some people that are very good at it. There's some great DIYers. There's a great DIY section in there that you can if you're that kind of person. So just come and visit. Most likely, the question has been asked. We also have a Facebook uh, group, you know, the Coral View, the Hydros official Coral View Hydros um, Facebook group. Please, you know, join us in there. You only have to answer a couple of questions. You know, lawyers made us do, they made us ask those questions. You fill out those questions, and then you get approved. So um, uh, join us in there. It's a great community. It's a starting community. And you know what? The, the great thing about the community is that everybody's there to help. And that's yep. what I like about our community. Everybody's there to help, and everybody has a very constructive criticism. Um, uh, and that's what we like about it, and we hope that it stays that way. Um, uh, so, so please come and visit us with, uh, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with a smile and, and the willingness to, to listen and to help. And that's, all you, that's the only requirement you need for the hydros. Right. You know? So yeah. thank you again for watching, everybody. I want to say thank you to my co-host, Dave. My name is Carlos. I want to say thank you to our producing, uh, producer, April, graphic designer, Jeremy. And uh, I think we'll see you in a couple of weeks. So yeah. thank you. Exactly. And thank you. And we'll see you next time.